Psychiatrists say that disorders like PTSD can't be cured. Instead, they claim they need to be managed with drugs for the rest of your life. It's bad medicine, but great for the bank account. Once you label somebody and you start medicating them, over the life of that person, it's gonna cost the government about a million and a half to provide these medications and treatment. There's a lot of money to be made here. There's a lot of money to be made by the, the companies that are producing these drugs. Profit is the only conceivable motive for all of these psychiatric drugs in the military. Taxpayers are footing the bill for this travesty of medicine. These psychiatric drugs that promote suicides, you're paying for them. So why do psychiatrists hand out drugs at such record levels? Because drugging people is a lot easier than actually helping them. And because of this explosion of psychiatric drugging, psychiatry has developed a very close relationship with drug companies. And they'll tell you all about it. Unfortunately, almost everywhere you look, you'll find financial conflicts of interest. Take Matthew Friedman, a psychiatrist and executive director of the VA's National Center for PTSD. Not only has Friedman been a paid speaker for three different drug makers, he also sat on the scientific advisory boards of the pharmaceutical companies that make Paxil and Zoloft. And guess what? These happen to be the only two psychiatric drugs approved by the U.S. government to treat PTSD. And then there's Dr. Elspeth Cameron Ritchie, until recently, the top psychiatrist in the U.S. Army. She praised the antipsychotic Seroquel for being very useful for the treatment of anxiety and combat-related nightmares. Not only is Seroquel totally unapproved for that purpose, it's linked to sudden cardiac death. Soldiers call it Sarah Kill. On the street, it's baby heroin. That same year, Richie starred in a webcast, partially bankrolled by Sarah Quill's maker, in which she continued to push the use of psychiatric drugs on the battlefield. Of course, I'm a psychiatrist, so I tend to think of psychiatric medications, and we treat soldiers with medications, with cognitive behavioral therapy, and other sophisticated treatments on the battlefield. Finally, their psychiatrist and former Brigadier General Stephen Zanakis. When he was in the Army, he pushed hard for frequent psychiatric screening of soldiers. The more, the better. Today, the Army screens its soldiers as many as five separate times, including a mandatory psychiatric screening when returning home from deployment and a follow-up six months later. And these screenings are loaded with conflicts of interest. The development of one questionnaire, recommended by the Army Surgeon General, was funded by Pfizer, the maker of the antidepressant Zoloft. Another screening program for service members and their families is administered by a group given millions of dollars from eight different drug companies. But Zanakis wants his own piece of the pie. He stands to make millions as CEO of a corporation selling a brain scanning device he plans to use to diagnose PTSD. Bottom line, with psychiatry, it's all about money, certainly not about help. And yet, without reforming this broken and ineffective system, the United States Department of Veterans Affairs recently hired 1,600 more mental health workers just to handle the problems the profession itself worsened. If all we're doing when we get more mental health professionals is more of the same thing, but then it's a fool's errand. And for the soldier who joined out of duty and served with honor, it all boils down to one word, betrayal. One of the things I have the benefit of really is getting thousands of emails a week whether it's from veterans or other people suffering from pharmaceutical damage, it's specifically veterans these days, we see an increase. We see people calling out and saying they feel betrayed. They are very proud to serve, fight for their countries, protect, you know, the people back home, their loved ones. And I think all they ask for is to come home and be treated fairly, given answers and looked after. And they're not looked after, they're told, 
it's all in your head, it's mental, take the tablets, it'll cure, go away and that's it. And I think that is betrayal for a word to use for those people is an understatement. It's the deepest betrayal of a human being to, to, to kill them while claiming you're treating them, to call it medicine and deliver death. And it's all so needless because there is hope and it doesn't involve psychiatric treatment.